So I'm taking a break from decorating tonight to do a Linux video, a look at Zorin OS, a Linux distribution which I've rated quite highly before, especially for new users. And well done to them to getting an article in Forbes, nothing like spreading the word of Linux. So there are three versions of Zorin, Core, Light, and Ultimate. So Core and Ultimate come with the GNOME desktop and the Light comes with the XFCE desktop. So I've got a copy of the Core and Ultimate versions. So the Ultimate was provided to me for free for testing by the developer. So I'll take a look at the features. I'm just gonna have to minimize myself here. So basically it comes down to features and support. Ultimate comes with more desktop layouts, six instead of three comes with more applications pre-installed and you get installation support. So that costs 39 euros. And the cost only applies to the ultimate version, the core and light versions are free. The desktop environment is GNOME, but you do get a look switcher. But before I get too far into the review, let's take a look at the memory usage. And I can tell you right now, it's not going to be good. 1.1 gig, and I've had it as low as 950. It's about typical GNOME, really. It's pretty wasteful on memory, but hey, look, I've given this system eight gig, so one gig used out of eight. Look, it's not a case that is slow. It is still very snappy. Let's start with the Zorin appearance and the look switcher. The six different layouts I have on the ultimate version are Windows 7, Windows XP or 2000. What's this one trying to be GNOME classic? Modern GNOME? Oh, I suppose it's near a classic, really, because the next one on the list is modern version of GNOME. Yes, yeah, so that moves. Yeah, that's definitely the modern version of GNOME. The other one's more like classic. The Unity layout. Yeah, modern Unity with the application launch on the bottom left hand side of the screen. And Mac OS. So a nice variety to choose from. I'm going to go with this layout, whatever it is. Yep, looks reasonable enough. Anyway, looking through the other options on here, so you can choose different icons on the desktop. Title bar buttons on the left or right hand side, so very easy to choose from. The theming, so you can choose between a light or dark theme. The light theme probably would have been a bit easier to see those pictures, hey, hindsight and all. But this third option here is a nighttime view. And that came on for me at about 20 past nine. So yeah, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so while I was messing around with this distribution, it was on the light theme and now I have the dark theme. But that's not the only item to change according to the time of day. Because the wallpaper, or more precisely the lock screen. So the settings, I'm hoping that goes to wallpaper. Yes, the lock screen, so that changes throughout the day. Nice little feature. Yeah, and you can change the accent color as well. Oh, that looks a bit off on the night mode. <laughs> yeah, it looks a bit better on the, well, light view. You've got some different options to choose from. I have to say they've done the theming really well. And you can also further customize different components for the applications, icons, and shell theme. So that was really the unique focus of it. So the theming and the desktop switcher. Looking at some further unique aspects are that they've added their own custom repository, which includes a few applications over and above the standard set of Ubuntu repositories. So you have things like the green recorder. This application is not pre-installed in the core version, but is available to install. Same for Hugin, what's this, uh, image panorama, uh, panorama stitcher. I was trying to think of the wording there. Cause I did look at the application description in the repositories, the latest version of SuperTax cart. Although I will point out that application is also available in Ubuntu as a snap. Lutris is available to install. So Lutris is an open source gaming platform. Not something I've come across before, but let's take a look at it. So it helps you install and manage your games in a unified interface. Our goal is to support every game which runs on Linux from native to Windows games via Wine to emulators and browser games. That sounds interesting. Too, it's gonna to be quite a mess trying to look through this list. So let's get a bit of order to this. So let's take a look. So I'm gonna switch theme or appearance. 
And we'll go back for that Windows 7 layout. So just taking a look at some of the things it comes with. So yeah, quite a lot here. I'm not going to read all these out. So fairly standard under accessories, games, quite a few games pre-installed. In fact, I think that's where a lot of the four gig size of this ISO comes from over the what, one gig or so ISO size for the core version. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of it is games. Graphics. Yeah, I'm not going to read all these out. That would just be boring. LibreCAD. Can't imagine that being so popular. Blender is a bit specific. Hmm. Internet. <laughs> Very sparse list in comparison. So it has Firefox as the default web browser. Have they done anything to Firefox? Got a nice theme on it. But no, other than that, it's about standard. Office. So they have provided their own version of LibreOffice on here. That takes up quite a lot of the list in the repositories. I suppose we should find out what version it is. Oh, bad choice opening base. That might take a bit longer. Uh, yeah, just create a new database. Oh, I said it would be a bad choice. No, helping about. 6.2. Ooh, is that newer than the version that's in Ubuntu 18.04? I should have mentioned it is based on the long-term support release of Ubuntu 18.04. Sound and video. And quite a list on here. Let's take a look at a cute application. Well, now that's a surprise because that comes with a dark theme by default. Now we have a light theme. Good old conflicts with themes on GNOME and Qt applications. System tools. Zorin Connect. Ah oh yes, this was the connect your mobile phone to Zorin. I think this was a utility that Ubuntu themselves were meant to add, but never really got it stable enough to add. I have a feeling this is GNOME's equivalent of KDE Connect. What mobile application do you want? Do you actually want KDE Connect? That'd be amusing. No, it wouldn't. That'd be really sad if I were just copying. Oh, come on, internet. What are you doing? So F-Droid isn't working. There we are, Play Store is though. Zorin Connect. Literally their own application. So yes, it does look very similar to KD Connect, but this would be working with the GNOME desktop. Well, it is a nice idea to provide the equivalent application in this desktop environment. So yeah, I think that covers most of it. So you can select to have the minimal version of Zorin Ultimate at time of install, which I went and checked out. Now it does lead you to believe that it will only be the Firefox web browser that will be installed, but no, it's a bit more than that. So you get the equivalent number of applications in Azorin Core, but with the added benefit of having the full selection on the desktop switcher, so the six different layouts. So I have to say, the look and feel of Zorin is really nice, and it's something a bit different to use compared to Ubuntu. Yeah, sure, I'm in Exeter Airport, yeah, close enough. No, it's not his wrong country. Anyway, that's just based on geolocation of my IP. I know that quite a few people will be disgusted that you do have to pay for the ultimate version, but you do have the choice of going for the free version. So perhaps anyone new to Linux, you could try out the core version, think, yeah, it works on my system, but maybe I want more of the features. So yeah, you could pay for the ultimate version, see how you like it. You do have all these applications here presented to you, so you don't have to go thinking, hmm, what do I need? What will be equivalent? You do have the applications here for you to use right now. So that was a look at Zorin OS 15. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.